Good afternoon. Welcome to how AWS is enabling travel to lift off for the future. It's really great to see you all here. I'm Claire Ward. I'm the technology leader for the travel and hospitality solutions worldwide industry practice. Now, we always say at Amazon, it's day one every day. And this is my very first reInvent, so it's quite exciting for me. Whether you're a reInvent veteran or it's your first reInvent, a very warm welcome to all of you. Now, reInvent's about you, our customers, and our partners. And I know, because I've seen some of you already, that we have a number of you here from our travel customers in the audience, and it's great to see you here. We also, as I mentioned, though, I'm I'm part of a team that looks after travel and hospitality customers. And I believe in the audience today, we have a load of you from our hospitality customers as well. Thank you for coming today. And if you're from a different industry, one thing I do know is you're going to be really excited to hear from our guest speakers today. I'm very honored to be joined by two very distinguished speakers. David Thompson, the Chief Technology Officer from American Express Global Business Travel and Sam Charmond, the Chief Information Officer of Qantas Airways. I invited them here today to share their stories because of their diverse backgrounds and experiences and the way that they continue to innovate in travel. Both David and Sam, have, both Amex GB and Qantas Airways, have been leaders in the travel industry for over 100 years. They were some of the earliest pioneers and they're still recognized as, as leading innovators in travel. Both David and Sam have first-hand experience of continuously transfor transforming their businesses. They leverage AWS for scale, for flexibility, for global reach, and all in a cost-optimized fashion. They're creating the travel, for, the travel for the future, and I'm quite excited to be here to be learning from them today. Firstly, I just wanted to touch on something that I find very interesting. A lot of conversations with you, our travel and hospitality customers, have told me that one of the biggest challenges you face is legacy systems. And a SCIF report published earlier this year that asked leading executives across the travel and hospitality industry what the most likely causes would be of business disruption in 2022 and 2023 said legacy systems. More importantly, if you look at two of the other causes, cybersecurity issues, system outages, we all know that that's sometimes caused by legacy systems as well. Now, the good news, you're dealing with that. The SCIF report also told us that the top area of investment is modernization of systems. Now, I can relate to some of the legacy challenges. As a CIO, I think I had about two thirds of my team dealing with low value added activities. And it wasn't just disruption, we did get a bit of disruption, but it was actually the complexity. Every time we wanted to be innovative with agility and speed, AWS tells you to do that all the time. And that ended up being slow and expensive when legacy systems integration was involved. And making the case for change was very difficult with so many competing business priorities. The good news is we know that many of you have made that case because the third biggest area of spend in this report is the migration of, of applications to the cloud. And we're going to hear from both David and Sam today about their transformation journeys and how they've made the case for change as well. Now, my journey in the world of travel started as a child. I grew up in the southeast of England near an airfield called Manston. And it was a military airfield in the Second World War. And as a kid, you know, my mum would drive us past and I'd look out for the aircraft to see what's parked outside. Sometimes a Spitfire or a Hurricane or a Mosquito, which were all uh, British Second World War aircraft. Um, so you, you can hear in my voice that started my love of aviation. And then in my teens, that same airfield became a, a popular destination for military air shows. And a British Airways Concorde would fly in in the morning and take people off for lunch and bring them back in the evening and I could get to see Concorde fly. Little did I know that some years later, or a few years later, I would join British Airways. Um, and yes, I did get to fly the Concorde. Really super, 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 super experience. Now that leads me to my first, speak, first guest speaker, David Thompson. 
David told me that he started out his career in the Air Force as an intelligence officer. And unfortunately, he wanted to be a pilot, but he was a little bit too tall for the Air Force regulations. The good news is he, he obtained his own private pilot's license and he has a little plane, which makes me a bit jealous. Um, so first of all, I want to say service. It's, it's always an honor to have a veteran here with us today. And secondly, I think what a lot of you will know is when you touch the world of travel, it gets into your blood. And that's definitely true of David, myself, and I think Sam as well. So after the Air Force, David moved into the world of Silicon Valley, where he built ERP systems. And the, the corporate mantra was practice what you preach. So they had to use all their systems internally. Now, what a great way to get feedback on your customer experience. David, at the same time, became a corporate traveler with global business travel. And that started out his aspiration to want to transform travel with technology. So David joined American Express Global Business Travel in 2017, and he's here today to tell us about his journey. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to David Thompson. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Claire. I appreciate that. And um, thank you for having me today. I'm very excited to share our story of American Express Global Business Travel and our transformation using Amazon technology. I'm also very pleased to see many of my friends, colleagues, and actually suppliers here today who traveled here for business and getting business travel recovery back up and running. So thank you for traveling. Really appreciate that. For those of you who uh, don't know American Express Global Business Travel, um, <clears throat> American Express Global Business Travel is the world's leading B2B travel platform, and we provide software and services uh, that manage travel, expenses, uh, and, and meetings and events for our large corporations. Um, we operate in 140 countries around the globe with just over 13,500 employees or associates around the globe. In 2019, we achieved about $34 billion in total sales across our enterprise. So that gives you a highlight of American Express Global Business Travel. Now, Claire mentioned um, Sam and I have come from companies that have been around for a very, very long time. American Express Global Business Travel was founded in 1915, 100 years ago, and over 100 years ago, actually. <clears throat> and it was really a company that was designed to carry um, very highly valuable possessions for customers of American Express and helping them transport and then evolved into a global business travel company. Um, and through that journey, the company has continued to evolve and change and change and change. And in 2014, we had a really large change come upon us. And that was a joint venture between Venture Capital and American Express and took GBT private. And with that going private, brought a lot of investments that we were allowed to then invest in our platform, and that started our journey, a tremendous amount of investment in our travel platform. And since 2014, we've invested over a billion dollars in our travel platform, uh, servicing our customers globally. Now, through that investment, we've continued to build on our own technology, but we've also acquired technology. Back in 2016, we acquired KDS, which is a European-based travel company that allowed us to bring our own online booking tool, a proprietary booking tool to GBT. Uh, we continued that journey uh, with the acquisition of 30 Seconds to Fly, which has an uh, AI uh, chatbot called Claire that's now integrated into our platform. Um, and Claire appreciates that. She's not AI. Um, and then we went, moved on and acquired another company uh, for high-touch white glove service called Ovation Travel, which services high-end lawyers and uh, CEOs and entertainment industry uh, companies. Um, and most recently, the acquisition of Agencia, which is a business division of Expedia. We bought that division. It was highly focused on small and medium-sized enterprises with an enterprise platform servicing that specific market. So evolving our platform, investing in our own technology, it's been quite a journey for us. Now, if you think about that journey, we needed a technology partner and a future technology partner, and we chose Amazon, and I'll go through that in detail. We started our migration journey. Just to give you an idea of the complexity, uh, when we started our journey, we had over 250 applications in our portfolio around the globe, and I'll get into detail in a timeline here, but just gives you a summary of our transformation migration journey here. Um, at the peak of our transformation here in migration, we did 22 application migrations in one weekend. That was the peak, the number of applications we did in this total 16-month timeline. Let me get into that timeline in a little bit more detail here. 
So in the timeline, the point of departure started around June 2020, where we developed our business case, the financial business case of costs and, uh, that we would uh, bear for this new project, costs we would take out, and the impacts of the business. Presented that business case. It was approved by the CEO and our board. And we launched our journey into the transformation of GBT to our full cloud enablement uh, using Amazon technology. We turned our focus after the business case was approved to internal stakeholders. Now, our environment is quite complex. We work with large global multinational companies. In many cases, our contracts with those customers had the customer as the data controller in some cases. And in some cases, we were the data processor. So we had to work client by client contract, getting, in some cases, explicit consent to migrate their data to the cloud client by client. So that was a tremendous amount of effort for us at GBT to work through that detail. We accomplished that task with the support of our commercial organization. And then we began the process of looking at our application portfolio, breaking down the 250 applications we have in our portfolio into logical move groups. How can we move blocks of applications piece by piece with very little implications to our business or disruptions to our business? And then we migrated, um, started the migration process, but we chose to leverage Amazon's um, professional services to have them help us with rapid application deployment using their tools and methodologies. And that partnership really helped us accelerate this program. They were a key partner to our success. They were key to helping us learn about how to do things rapidly. And that was one of the key things that we uh, really take adva took advantage of in this overall program. Once we began the migration of the, pro or the applications, we saw no disruptions to our business. And um, once we had the full applications uh, portfolio migrated, we started the post-portfolio um, operational stability program. And um, that was really important for our business to make sure everything worked smoothly, worked well together, and the business had a high confidence in our solution that we delivered. And then we finalized our implementation with a cloud center of excellence and bringing all of our team members together in a cloud center of excellence and really using AWS FinOps capabilities to manage the costs of our overall enterprise. So we hit our point of arrival in the June 2020 timeframe, a total 16 month timeframe. Our business was impressed, our board was impressed, our customers were really happy that we didn't have any disruption. So very good journey for us. Now to give you an idea of the GBT platform, uh, the new platform gave us the ability to bring content from our suppliers. And a supplier is an airline, it's a hotel, a global distribution system. Bringing content together in our one GBT platform, that's what we call it internally, allows us to distribute content. And content might be an airplane seat, hotel room, a car rental. That is content that we sell to our clients. And we then bring that to our platform, presenting that through point of sales to our travel counselors, if you happen to call us um, on the telephone. Our travel counselors have a point of sale. If you're our user mobile application, it's the same content to mobile application, and also our online booking tools, using all the same content in the one GPT platform. Um, now underpinning all of this, we're using AWS services and technology. And just to give you an idea, here's a few of those. So uh, Amazon Elastic Kubernetes, EKS capabilities for us. Amazon RDS, a really important part of our infrastructure. Uh, also an MSK for our managed Kafka streaming. And one of the key things here in this overall architecture that's important for us, our clients want data sovereignty and they want to know where their data resides. And so in this architecture, we're able to leverage the availability zones of Amazon to have European data sit in Europe, American data sit in the US. And that technology has really enabled us to um, answer some of our customers' demands in our architecture. Now, <clears throat> the GBT platform has really become important and value add to our clients. And that's important for us to deliver value in the technology world to our customers. And the globalization capability of the platform is really important. Consistent global capabilities across the globe. Many of our big clients operate in 140 countries. They want consistency across the globe in our applications and our portfolio. We want our pro products and services to be very focused on the traveler what experiences they um, have as they're traveling, what are their preferences, where do they like to stay, what are their common themes um, when they're traveling. And we also wanted a deep insights and analytics platform uh, to offer to our clients, and this is enabling that for us. And finally here, the digital traveler. When you're traveling, you want to have access to our travel counselors or our services if there's a disruption. And the platform allows us to have direct connections from you as a traveler to our services so we can help you when there's a, a, a disruption in airline traffic, 
or weather or whatever and helped you get you rerouted and continue on your way to a customer. All of this brings a lot of value to our customers. Our customers value us. And during the pandemic, we had the height of our sales at GBT. Customers are coming to GBT because of our platform, because of our capabilities and our reliability at GBT. Now there's two really key, 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 sorry, <coughs> two key drivers uh, of why we chose AWS. We have a lot of global requirements at GBT. Um, we need the data residency and the data privacy capabilities of AWS, at our platform. We have a lot of applications that are localized for very specific requirements in country, and the platform allows us to do that. Global application availability, we want our applications to work around the globe with really great performance. And we wanted to be able to, to distribute content rapidly from our suppliers directly to our clients. Now the last point here on environmental stability, many clients have made commitments to have carbon reductions by 2030 or 2050. They can't achieve those reductions unless they reduce travel or come to us for solutions. And so we've been able to leverage the platform to build a new capability called Marketplace for Sustainability. And what we've done is adjusted all of our systems to ingest data from our suppliers about their carbon impact per uh, segment, per hotel room for your stay. This is then presented to the traveler. So as you're making a booking, it can give you the, the greenest options uh, for that travel. This is tracked. We're able to report this for your corporation. It allows the corporation to start to see how they can influence travel and reduce the carbon impact of travel through the data that's provided by our platform. Um, one other area that's really important for us is rapid delivery of capabilities to our clients. We want to move fast. We want to be responsive. Um, so be able to distribute our products quickly across the platform. But also, as you saw in our 100-year journey, we have a lot of acquisitions. We want to simplify our acquisitions and be able to integrate them very, very quickly within GBT. We can, um, that was one of our primary focuses, and I'll give an example of that here shortly. We also wanted to have a variable cost model. And as you see with AWS, we have a more of a variable cost model when we see spikes in production, a lot of demand. We see our cost goes up as things uh, start to slow down during certain peaks and valleys of travel. We are able to see our costs go down. So this is a great capability for us across the globe. We also had one application that's really important to our business that was a legacy application. I'll get into that in a little bit in detail and how we used Amazon to convert that application. <clears throat> Now, talking about Agencia, it was one of the most recent acquisitions. We were able to leverage the skills of Amazon, and they have a product that allows you to do accelerated due diligence on a corporation. If they're already an Amazon customer, they have a template and product, so when you do due diligence on a company, you can actually get a lot of information ahead of time of how they operate in Amazon, uh, the structure, the costs, all of those things. So it actually accelerates the due diligence on an acquisition target. Um, we're also able to leverage playbooks of how to implement um, and integrate an Amazon deployed client or an acquired entity, and that's really allowed us to move faster using the um, uh, Amazon to Amazon integration that we have. So Agencia was an, uh, an Amazon customer, so this has allowed us to move much more faster in an acquisition, and it reduced the effort on our teams and overall interaction and engagement in this uh, integration. Um, through the Agencia acquisition, we had one application that we needed to transform. And we used the Blue Age um, acquisition of a Amazon to take a legacy code from our AWS, or sorry, uh, AS400 um, system, uh, about three million lines of code, converting that into a modern application, allowing us to have a more modern application without completely rewriting that. It was a very successful capability for us from Amazon, helping us to continue to lean forward and using the architecture we have previously and bring it into the modern age. Now, as we look forward at GBT and all of our investments, we want to continue to focus on our clients. With this platform we have in place today, we can now focus on broadening and deepening the analytics we provide our clients with the data we're capturing from the traveler, from our suppliers, um, and using that information to help drive a better travel program for our customers. Um, the actual integration and display of diverse supplier content. We have more and more content coming our way. We now have travelers who want to book an Airbnbs, who don't want to actually stay in a hotel. So we're now integrating that type of content into our platform and finding new ways to bring new content to our travelers to enable a travel program to reduce costs. 
and the rapid acquisition of new technologies. As we talked about the Claire AI bot, as we see new capabilities, we can use a platform to very rapidly bring in capabilities into GBT using this new global platform. And finally, as our suppliers are more and more frequently presenting custom offers to you as a traveler, the industry is going to personalized offers based on your status, based on how frequently you travel. You may see an airline present an offer to you that's unique to you. Our systems need to be able to handle that if the airlines are presenting a custom offer to you. So we're modifying our systems to bring that content in and present an offer to you real time as a traveler. All of these capabilities are enabled by our Amazon investments and all of this transformation. It's been a real rewarding uh, program for us and to GBT and our clients. Um, one thing I'd like to leave you with here as I uh, end my, my comments, many of you have seen your companies transform. Many of you are now working remote. Many of you are not going to the office any longer. But what's happening, we're seeing a transformation in cultures of companies where companies are now having people travel for meetings. Short meetings, come together, meet, do your work, go back home. And so we're starting to see travel integrated into a customer's culture and uh, starting to enhance that. We're starting to see employees change with that culture. People who had never traveled before are now all of a sudden traveling because of this new environment, because of COVID and the new change in how people work at work. And so it's exciting to see that. And here's a quick quote from our CEO at GBT. You know, we're starting to see business travel taking on a new role as a catalyst of culture. And we personally see that, we see it with our clients, and hopefully you're seeing that in your companies as well. So thank you for the time today, I really appreciate it, and uh, have a great day, thanks. Well, thank you, David. Now, I rather like the Claire AI bot. <laughs> um, seriously, the one thing that I really took home from that was the aspiration to be the marketplace for green business travel. I heard some stats, I was reading a report on sustainability last week, and you may not know this, 83% of people in this report said that sustainable travel is vital. And 71% said they are already and now considering sustainability in their travel choices. So I think that's, that's a really super story to tell. So turning to our second guest speaker, Sam. Um, I have a few more stories. So I found out when I first met Sam that he joined Qantas the year before I joined Qantas, which is far too long ago for either of us to admit to. And Sam also, like me, grew up near an airport, uh, an airport called Bankstown in the southwest of Sydney. And he was learning to be a programmer. So he said he'd sit at his computer typing code, looking at the aircraft, going, how on earth do they take off? Um, which I think an awful lot of us sort of struggle with when you're this high. Um, Sam also to told me that um, this trip is going to be a, a perfect, uh, how can I say, experience coming to the USA and to Las Vegas. He loves basketball, he's a keen Miami Heat fan, and he's a keen poker player. So just in case you want to connect to Sam and chat to him, I think you know where he might be in the evenings this week. Seriously, Sam, we're delighted to have you here and excited to hear about your transformation journey. Please join me in welcoming Sam Charmond. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, and good morning to all of my colleagues back home in Australia. And I've got some of my colleagues here as well. Um, but yes, my name is Sam Sharman. I am the group CIO at Qantas, and I have been at Qantas for 28 and a half years. And yes, I don't look that old, but yes, I am that old. A um, little bit about Qantas before we get on to the topic at hand. So the Qantas group is made up of a few businesses. Qantas Airlines, obviously the, the main business, which is a safely providing premium air travel domestically international, in, and internationally to about 30 million passengers annually. Then we have the Jetstar Group, which is the airline um, providing um, travel to 20 odd passengers. Then we have Qantas Loyalty, which is one of the world's leading airline coalition frequent flyer programs. And we have Qantas Link, which is a regional airline flying 2,000 flights a week to remote areas of Australia. Innovation is at the heart of our business. We are a 102-year-old business. We celebrated 102 years two weeks ago. 
Did you know that in 1965, a gentleman by the name of Jack Grant, who was a Qantas safety manager, invented the escape slides, which are mandatory on all commercial flights that fly over water? And in 1973, I believe, we at Qantas invented business class, which I'm sure some of you experienced flying over here today, this week. And more recently, Qantas announced that probably a, one of our largest innovations is something we call Project Sunrise, which is a, an aggressive goal to basically fly nonstop from Sydney to New York, for example, Sydney to London. As I said before, the innovation is at the heart of everything we do and most of the things that we do. Now, if I talk about some examples of technology innovation that Qantas has undertaken in the past few years. One is a, a solution we call Quadrex, which is taking hundreds of thousands of data inputs into our technology, into our warehouse and into our AWS platform in order to help us determine the right aircraft to purchase, the number of seats we should having that aircraft, how much freight we should carry. And it helps in our decision making. A second example is one we call personalization, which for our tens of uh, millions of frequent flyers, we are computing every, every day billions of permutations of offers we can members. Another example we call Constellation, which I believe and Qantas believes is world leading. is a flight planning solution, which basically, versus what we have, allows us to compute multi multiple permutations of options for flight plans from a particular city. Now, what allows our pilots and flight dispatchers to do is to interject, look at options to prioritize speed, time, fuel savings, or, or avoiding bad weather. Now, Constellation utilizes Amazon RDS, uh, DynamoDB, and Amazon S3. So if anyone wants to know any more about that, please reach out to your Amazon AWS uh, folk, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. Now, that's not where it ends for us. In uh, late 2019, we embarked on a challenge for us to basically get it out of our data center. Uh, Qantas Group was probably the first um, company in Australia to sign a cloud deal with AWS uh, over 10 years ago. And we had a lofty vision back then to be 100% cloud or software as a service. Um, at the time, we thought it's a very aggressive target, but um, we, we were going for it. <clears throat> and in late 19, having spent seven years migrating slowly over to the cloud, we decided it's time to really aggressively push the data center. It's that time we put the plan together, started mobilizing the team, put the business case together, and set our sights to start that. Now, we gave us 28 months to do this, to undertake this task. But we all know what happened in March 20. Basically, shut down aviation for particularly out of Australia. Over a few weeks, the international borders of Australia were shut. Um, domestic, domestically, states within Australia will shut to each other. Overnight, pretty much, Qantas Airlines went from an $18 billion revenue business to basically nothing. And all we were doing was flying repatriation flights to bring back Australians back home. But having gone through that process, <clears throat> we doubled down on our principles, which we wanted to untangle some legacy. We wanted to simplify technology. We wanted to unify, da unify data and obviously maintain our safety standards and protect our data for, of our customers. Now, in April 21, we recommenced the program. Having starting to see the lights of vaccinations coming through and we were starting to see the domestic borders within Australia opening up, we started our program in earnest. Now, if you recall, I did mention we gave ourselves 28 months. Well, with the help of our fantastic team at Qantas and our partners, TCS and Microfocus, and of course, AWS, we managed to do it in 12. We had 
ten, tens of thousands of person years of development on 24 mainframe applications. And I'm not talking about mainframe applications that sat on the side. These things were fundamental to the operations of our business. Tens of millions of lines of PL1 code. Can anyone tell me PL1 was invented? 1960, older than most of us here. And we were dealing with that type of technology. Now the benefits are quite obvious as the CIO finances so we saved 60% of costs. It's an amazing achievement in 12 months. In this case, the ROI was fantastic. But we also created a data platform for our business that will unlock future value for our business and obviously increase speed to <clears throat> I'm here to say that we are very happy that we are now one app away and that the final app will be in February to be for Qantas Airlines anyway percent cloud or software as a service. Our Qantas loyalty business is already there and Jetstar will commence its journey in, in the coming months. Now as we think about the journey we've just been on and the, and the opportunities for our future, the three, there's three things that are be a focus for us. Number one is maintain our relentless focus on customer obsession, increasing and our operational efficiency and pro um, productivity, and progress towards our sustainability goals. A lot of people over the last few days have been asking me, why did we choose AWS? Well, when we started our journey over 10 years ago, AWS spent the time to invest and understand our business. So as we start to think and partner up in trying to solve the complex business problems that Qantas has, AWS understood it, understood our business. So that long-term partnership was built from the early days. But for me, peace of mind, knowing that our data and our applications are secure, are important to me, that we're moving this, and that the, the focus on sustainability of AWS is congruent to ours. As I, as I leave you now to leave you with a couple of messages, number one, it's st just start. If an airline 102 years old during a global pandemic can focus and prioritize on the cloud, anyone can. So start small, scale fast, pivot often. Now to all of my colleagues back home in Australia, maintain the rage, stay focused, challenge the organization and keep doing what you do best. Thank you all for joining me today and my colleagues back home in Australia, have a good day. Good evening everyone, thank you. Wow, what a story. Goodness. That leaves you a bit speechless. That was huge. Thank you very much, Sam. I, you know, I never knew in all that time in the industry that Qantas invented the escape slide on aircraft. Isn't it great? Every time you come here, you learn something new. And one of the things, I'm glad you left that slide up for me, because one of the things that I took away was that last quote, dream in years, plan in months, track weekly, pivot daily. I'm one of those sort of people that I like to take a quote home, and that's going to be on a post-it note on my desk next week. So as we finish off today, as I said, where we started is reInvent's about you. It's about our customers and our partners, and you're here to share and you're here to learn. If you are interested in learning from some more of our customers, the hospitality customers, the hospitality breakout is in here um, on Thursday morning with Kelly Dowdy from Yum Brands and Sean Seaton from Choice Hotels. Please do sign up because the seats are going quite quickly. And we'd love you to find out more about the travel and hospitality team and what we are doing to support our travel customers. So please visit our website, aws.com forward slash travel. Having said that, after this event, if you go out of the door and all the way around to that side of the building, the travel and hospitality lounge um, I will be there. I believe Steve and our team leader will be there. Sam and, Charman, uh, Sam and Dave, uh, David Thompson are going to come with me. If you wanted to catch up with any of us and ask us any questions, I'd ask you to come round to the lounge because there is going to be another event in here um, in about half an hour's time. And finally, so thank you very much. <laughs> Oops.
the last slide didn't come up. Um, finally, <laughs> leaving me to say, I know you get asked this in every session, but please, please do fill in the survey. We really value your feedback and want to continuously improve what we do here every year. So whilst it was my, look, my very first reInvent, I hope to see you all back here this time next year in the travel breakout. Thank you very much.